Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. Today I have another weekly used gun review video for you. Remember in these videos we take about eight used firearms that have come into the store and give you about a three to four minute review on each to give you guys an idea of some different stuff that is out there on the market. Remember the purposes of these videos is to be educational and informative, uh, also to be entertainment. We are not making this video to sell you anything to keep in accordance with YouTube's policies. Anyway guys, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, remembering the format of these videos, we start off with most common and move through least common as the video progresses. So starting off at the number one spot is the very popular Bursa Thunder 380. This is a double single action direct blowback pistol. Does have a magazine disconnect, fires in double single action. Does have a decocker safety here. Now, the Bursa of Thunder would hit the market in 1995, and they are made in Argentina. Uh, Bursa's had a huge line of firearms. They've come out with different uh, models, a 9mm, 40, 45, but this one's definitely always been their most popular. They have a CC version with more rounded edges, a shorter, more bobbed hammer, lower profile sights. They make these in a bitone like you see here, a uh, all black, and all sort of a silver uh, coating finish if you want, like a stainless. Um, they have the seven round mags and the eight round mags, so there's a lot of versatility here as they happen on the market uh, for 25 years. Uh, what makes these popular is they do take a page right out of the notebook of the Walther PPK, which has been around since prior to World War II, being that it's got a fixed barrel and a straight blowback design for even being the size that it is, they're actually known for being very, very reliable and very accurate. Um, these have always sold pretty well in my store, mostly with women. They are very popular with women. Uh, again, with the size and weight, they're a little heavier than most of your uh, small, like five to eight round capacity 380s. But with that, you have a lot of uh, reduced muzzle flip and recoil compared to other firearms in its size. And again, uh, accuracy. These are also overbuilt in terms of safety. So you've got basically three safety features on here, a magazine disconnect, a manual decocker safety, and a frame lock. So again, the safety features, again, uh, mostly for first time buyers. Uh, a lot of people really like the, um, the features that, those, that this provides in terms of safety. Uh, very easy to take care of, very easy to disassemble and maintain. Uh, brand new, normally on the market, you should be able to find these things for about 300 to 350 used typically between 200 to 250. Right now the used market on these again is about 50 to 100 dollars higher uh, being uh, specifically in the concealed carry market where we're seeing a lot of price increases on things. So uh, this one's in really good condition with two magazines in its box. Typically these only come with one as new. Spare mags are about 35 dollars so Again, something like this for about $300 is gonna be typical, but a very, very nice firearm. I'm sure many of you guys have seen them in your gun stores, or maybe many of you own them, but they are very popular for the money, just a good uh, backup sort of sidearm or uh, concealed carry firearm, glove box gun, whatever have you, uh, that's just worth keeping around. So that's number one, the Burst of Thunder. All right, up next is a popular little type of revolver, a little mouse gun. Uh, this is a North American Arms Mini Revolver. The company has really been around since 1974, and it was originally uh, uh, known as Rocky Mountain Arms, and then in 1976 was purchased by new owners, and they renamed the company North American Arms. Uh, they were known for making very small, again, what you would call a mouse gun, deep concealment, uh, pocket gun, backup pistols is really what their, their main market was. Um, th this particular design was actually uh, brought to the market by a company called Freedom Arms, but they sold the rights to these designs, as many revolver designs, to North American Arms in 1990. Uh, so since then, so about the past 30 years, North American Arms has been making these little mini revolvers, constantly improving on the design and safety of, of the firearm. And what they really are is very nice, very lightweight, deep concealment types of pistols or revolvers. And they make them in 22 varieties, so 22 Magnum, which this is, 22 long rifle, and 22 short. Uh, five round capacity, the cylinder, you take out the base pin, cylinder drops out. Uh, they do make cylinder conversions for these as well, so they are a nice little versatile little pistol or little revolver. The price point on these things, new, uh, brand new, is anywhere from about the $250 to $350 price point, depending on where you find it. Uh, use the pricing on these, of course. I've seen them around, they hover kind of around the $200 mark they're a tad bit higher right now based on what's going on uh, but if this is going to be like you know formal attire 
you're dressing up in a suit or a dress and you're going out for the evening, but you want something on you, this is just a super lightweight. They've made uh, interesting like cards that these fit into, like leather panels, so you can slide it into a back pocket. So if you're somebody who's, you know, you're going someplace and you really don't want to print, this is a nice thing to have on you, or as an everyday carry, as a backup. So again, something you can throw in the pocket, but maybe your EDC is like a, an XDS or a SIG P365, you want a little bit extra there to back you up, this is a great option. Also because of the 22 caliber, having it as like a backpacking or a snake gun, something to defend yourself against small, uh, potentially dangerous animals is also a good thing to have, something you don't want, you know, if you're going out for just the day hiking, you don't want to lug, you know, lug around your Glock 20 or something like that. So. Anyway, these are really, really cool little uh, revolvers, very functional. Again, you're not gonna be too accurate with them, good for about maybe seven yards. Uh, but anyway, yeah, really, really cool. I don't get too many of these in here used, but you know, when people see them, people like to pick them up. It's also a nice uh, sort, of, sort of handgun that's a little bit different to just put in the collection, take it out to the range occasionally, just to see if you can stretch out your uh, marksmanship with micro pistol skills or whatever. But yeah, little North American arms, mini revolver. All right, up next I have not a Smith & Wesson, but it is a Metro Arms American Classic 1911, chambered in 45 ACP. Now this has really nice stainless finish on the slide and a blued frame. You can get them in an all blued coloration or the all stainless coloration. And it comes with wood grips with this sort of etched in fish scaling uh, pattern and texture. So really, really nice extended beaver tail safety, ex extended uh, skeletonized trigger with really cool kind of machine work in their design. Uh, skeletonized trigger with an over travel adjustment. Now, the cool part about these, as many of you guys know, there are a bunch of 1911 variants that come out of the Philippines, most notably the Arms Corps or the uh, Rock Island 1911s, okay? Those start off at about the $500 price point with a Parkerized finish and the slab wood grip standard 1911 A1 configuration, okay? These, also, with the upgrade, you know, like the really nice finish, nice bluing, the nice stainless, the nice skeletonized components, the extended grip safety, the wood grips, start off at about the same price, at about the five to $600 price point, brand new. Now, used, you should find these normally between about $350 to $450. Of course, the market's up about $50 to $100 on these sub $1,000 guns, so, you know, expect to pay about $500 ish for something like this today. But if you wait and you're patient again a year or two from now, you might find these again about in the $400 price point. For that money, this is a really, really nice 1911. Not only, you know, the fit, the finish, it's very tight, there's no rattle, no wobble in the slide, and this is used. Uh, the trigger on it is also incredibly light, really nice reset, really nice brake. Again, over travel adjustment, actually better trigger than the Rock Island. And I think this trigger rivals or is even better than some things like the base level uh, 1911 mil spec from Springfield or the Ruger SR 1911. So it really fits in there well at the price point. I just think it's kind of like those Desert Eagle 1911s, just not really well known. Uh, and therefore they're trying to use sort of a really attractive price point to get them out there in the market. So if you do stumble across one of these on your dealer's used gun shelf, again, for the money, really worth taking a look. Really, really nice, handy feeling 1911. So anyway, there you go, Metro Arms, American Classic. Okay, up next I have a pretty unique uh, firearm. This is actually Han Solo's blaster from Star Wars. Actually, of course, that was a joke. Uh, everybody knows he used a C96 broom handle Mauser that was heavily modified for the film before everybody corrects me. But what this actually is, it's a Charter Arms Explorer II 22 pistol. Now, the history on this would actually start back in the 1950s with the Armalite in the AR-7, which they had designed for the military as a survival rifle kept with, like, pilots and things like that. If you guys don't know what that is, it is essentially a takedown 22, where the barrel pops off the receiver and the, uh, the butt plate opens up. You can stick the barrel uh, into the butt plate. You can even take the butt plate off of the receiver, stick the receiver in the butt plate, or in the butt stock, I'm sorry, and even take the magazine. So you basically just have like a butt stock that has the rest of the gun in it, getting it down to a package, literally about the length of this entire pistol. And it can all come apart and you know be put back together into a semi-automatic 22. Now other uh, arms manufacturers would begin production on the AR-7 as well. So that would be Charter Arms as well as Henry, I believe. Yes, yeah, the Henry Survival Rifle is what they called it. Now Charter Arms came up with the ingenious way or design of coming up with a handgun that was very similar in form and function. Now before anybody asks, I uh, have looked into this and the pretty much definitive answer I have received is that Charter Arms uh, specifically intended to make this without any parts compatibility with the rifle version so that nobody could uh, 
purchase the handgun and the rifle and be caught with like uh, intent to build an SPR by putting the pistol uh, barrel onto the rifle or putting the stock onto the pistol. Uh, so they made the parts uh, non-compatible for that reason. But essentially the philosophy here is the same. It is a magazine-fed semi-automatic 22 survival, uh, survival pistol and following in with the design elements. Sorry, I just had somebody come in. But if you are familiar with the AR-7 survival rifle, the concept is basically very much the same as how it takes down and uh, makes itself more compact. You start here by unthreading this collar around the barrel, and then the barrel just pops right off. And you can take out the magazine, and there is a little storage compartment down here. You can pop that in there. If you had a spare mag, you could keep one stowed here and another one inserted in the firearm. And then you have the barrel and the frame and grip. Uh, stored separately and you could go backpacking hiking keep it as a little survival pistol I don't know in your boat or something uh, they have this in an 8 and a 10 inch barrel option so let's see here the charging handle collapses in too making it a little bit more compact pull the bolt back a little bit drop that in tighten it down pull the magazine out and we're back in action. So a nice little, again, survival gun. It's mostly, it's like a polymer frame, so it's a very, very lightweight for its size. Uh, just a nice option. So um, used on the current market, these are not heavily expensive, although they're not that common. Uh, you typically find them between about $200 to $300, depending on, you know, if it's got a couple mags, if it's in really good condition, it has its original box. So they really are sort of a novelty these days, uh, but still pretty cool to see. I've never actually seen one in person until this one came in. Again, not common, but not super valuable. So pretty, pretty cool. A little Explorer too. Okay, up next I have a pretty important rifle as far as modern sporting bolt action rifles are concerned. This is a Remington Model 722, which is the short action version of the Model 721, and this one's chambered in 222 Remington. Now, this would bridge the gap between the Model 70 and the Model 700 from Remington that's a very popular today. Now, the whole philosophy behind this rifle was to get out a very nicely made, very strong action. In fact, it takes a lot of cues from the Mauser action. It's sort of a simplified Mauser action to make it inexpensive and able to be mass produced for the sporting market. Something affordable that they could get out in the hands of the normal blue collared uh, sportsman or hunter that has a really nice fit and finish but doesn't cost a whole lot of money. And so around the 40s when this came out, so this is actually produced between 1948 and 1962 it was really difficult to get into a manufacturing process where you could put out a really nice, well-made, very strong and robust action for not a whole lot of money. It's just you usually had to pay um, you know, craftsmen of their trade a lot of money to sit down and make these things. So this was really a sort of a game changer in the way of the sort of the mass-produced pro mass uh, sporting rifle. Now we saw a lot of this come out of the World War II era, of course, as a lot of uh, arms manufacturing was modernized for quicker production at cheaper pricing. So after all of the mechanized uh, armament manufacturing plants had come out of the war. A lot of the commercial manufacturing plants, which a lot of actually took part of in the war production, uh, really went on with that same philosophy to say, hey, if it works for the war, then this is a good way that we can get a lot of firearms out for the commercial market at really affordable pricing. So uh, this was sort of usher in the new era of the affordable option on the hunting line. Now, of course, as mentioned, this would lead into the Remington 700 line, which exists today and has been very popular. It's probably the Remington 700 probably at least in the top three of all time hunting rifles that have been used you know since their inception um very very smooth very strong action this one's used of course it needs there's some dried grease on here but it's a very nice smooth action you would have had a rear sight right here which is gone very thin profile barrel uh, making these in a multitude of different calibers. As I mentioned, the Model 721 was the long action version if you wanted them in bigger calibers. So really good sporting rifle, game rifle. Uh, the market on these, in really good condition. These will command anywhere between about six and $800. Uh, this one here has seen quite a bit of use. There's no cracks or anything in the stock, but there are some definite scuffs and scratches. As mentioned, the rear and the front side are missing. Um, in this condition, I would venture a guess to say this would bring in probably about $400 retail. So they are still very affordable and there are a lot of collectors on them. Again, as a lot of people throughout the 40s, the 50s, the 60s remember, you know, dad or grandpa having one of these taking it out deer hunting. So they, they were pretty prevalent and very popular at the time. So uh, very cool, a Remington Model 722. 
Okay, up next is one that is similar to a firearm I had on these videos maybe about four weeks ago. That was the HK416D. Now the HK416 as a traditional 5.56 rifle is very expensive and if you find one they're going to run you about four to five thousand dollars. Now what they did come out with and the other one was actually made, yeah this is licensed trademark by, this is made by Walter but trademarked HK. Uh, this is actually a 22 LR version of the 416. Now the full, full size version again is what you guys saw. Um, this is in the pistol configuration or like the uh, PDW and I'll show you inside the box. Kind of comes in this configuration again just as a pistol and of course multiple magazines here. 22 long rifle. Now the previous owner put the arm brace on here making it again sort of a nice little PDW package, again in 22 LR. Now the pricing on these has never been that high back when the 416 22s were available and lately they have not been. I don't know if they quit making them. New retail pricing on them was about four to $500. Now that's about where you're seeing them come out for you. So about the $500 to 550 mark is about where the 416 22s are. Now this one having added a, uh, a kind of a buffer tube for the arm brace here, plus the arm brace, and there's some other stuff, a couple extra magazines. I expect a package like this to sell in the used market for about the $600 mark. So again, to get, if you're like an HK fan and you like the idea of a 416 and you can't find or you're not willing to pay, you know, the four or five grand for a real, you know, 5.56 version of the 416, kind of a cool thing to get to fill the collection. It has all the same controls, the same ergonomics, the same feel. Um, even an aluminum, you know, the aluminum receiver half. So you have a very nice facsimile of the 416, again, for not a whole lot of money. So cool little plinker, take it out to the range, get one to just have something cool and unique to train somebody how to shoot on with, with very low recoil. Or if you have an actual 416, it's cool to get one of these so you can actually take it out as a training implement so you're not burning through all your 5.56 ammo all the time. So really, really cool concept and package. Again, this is this would make, I think, the third 416-22 I've had since we've been here. So I get them from time to time. But of course, stuff like this always flies off the shelf pretty quick. But really cool to get in. Okay, up next, it's a very popular one. This is the Winchester Model 62A. As many of you guys might notice, it's like the quintessential Winchester gallery gun pump action 22. Uh, it does have a slam fire action, so very, very quick shooting, very large capacity on the magazine tube. Now, this design would actually start all the way back in 1890 with the Browning Design Model 1890, what people call the gallery gun. This is the typical thing you would see all the time at shooting galleries back when you could go to a carnival and shoot at targets, steel plates, little rubber ducks or whatever uh, with a 22. Uh, run fire today you can't even really do that with bb guns anymore the way the world has gone but so you know these have a really nostalgic following a lot of collectors on these sort of things now the 62a that you see here is really the fourth and final final design iteration of the model 1890 so going back to 1890 of course the original gallery gun comes out it's got an octagonal barrel it's got the crescent butt plate really nice quality craftsmanship um, in, model, in 1906, they would revise it and turn it into the model 1906. And the real two main things that they changed was they turned it into a round barrel and they put a flat shotgun butt plate on it just to make production a little bit quicker and less expensive. Uh, then they would stay in production as the model 1906 all the way until 1932 when production would stop. They would then resume production and then again with the same design, but redesignating it the Model 1962, or the Model 62, not 1962, I'm sorry, the Model 62. Now in 1940, they would go through further revisions again, where they would come out with a Model 62A, which is what you see here. Now the re revisions made were a elongated pump handle here, and a small revision made to the hammer. Now again, this would stay in production as a Model 62A up until 1958, when production altogether would cease. So this has a very long lineage, really, from 1890 uh, all the way up until the 1950s. Again, being used predominantly as gallery guns. They always made good squirrel hunting guns, uh, things like that. So a lot of these were made and there are different sub variants. Um, and there's a lot of collector following on these sorts of things as mentioned. Now the pricing on them is all over the place. So if we're talking about an 1890, a 1907, a 62, or a 62A, but specifically because we have a 62A in front of us, uh, the pricing on one of these in really good condition tops out at the top at about $800. It's really, really good shape. And they drop from there. In this condition, uh, you have some a lot of finished thinning here, but there's no cracks or anything in the stock. 
uh, some definite wear on the pump up here. The action is very good, nice bore. I would say the value on something like this is around four to five hundred dollars. So, not overly expensive. Still, they make really fun plinking 22s if you ever get a chance to pick one up. Uh, just something really nostalgic about a pump action 22. Anyway, that is the Winchester Model 62A. All right, last but not least is a very popular AR-15. This is a Daniel Defense. Uh, this one is a DDM4 V11. So Daniel Defense is actually a pretty interesting company when it comes to AR-15 uh, manufacturing and design. Um, really the company started or really got its main start in 2002 with uh, Marty Daniel in Georgia. And what he did really between the years of 2002 and 2009-ish was come out with a variety of different parts, backing up a little bit. I really got into firearms and in, I guess about the late 90s and wanted to come up with different ways to improve on the design, uh, come up with different enhancements to make. Uh, really, if, if we were to say this is to bring the AR-15 platform into the modern era. Now, if we look back on the commercial market throughout the late 90s and into the early 2000s, we were in the assault weapons ban. And even prior to that, the AR-15 market was really made up of just a few manufacturers and everything was really just to a sort of a military watered down configuration like an A2 or an A1 variation, uh, M4. So you basically just had your CAR-15 handguards, you know, your ribbed handguards, your A2 or your M4 stock or your A1 stocks. So very, very basic. You didn't see a lot of things with rails and, you know, the whole concept of key mod and, and um, different stock and grip configurations, mag pull. I mean, none of that was really around. It was basically military standard. It's good enough to go and that's it. So then we get into the early 2000s. He's wanting to really expand upon the platform. So he comes up with a bunch of different modifications or parts, uh, starting off with like a rear sling loop. That was his uh, design concept. Uh, coming up with a quad rail, which is actually would be adopted by SOCOM in the mid 2000s. Uh, it had a lot of success with really creating parts to bolt onto other AR-15s to modernize them. Uh, then in 2009, he would come out with his very first AR-15, the DDM-4 V1, and the rest is sort of history. So he's really been in the, uh, you know, Daniel Defense has really only been in the AR-15 manufacturing game for about the past 10 or 11 years. Now, again, one of the main, you know, the main claims to fame on this, and it was really sort of being at the right place at the right time, was coming into this concept of, it's perfectly as seen here, sort of the race gun, the competition, the modern, the cool, the different, the lightweight, the ergonomic, sleek designs. This really wasn't done in this marketplace. Now it's done a lot today, like all the major uh, AR-15 manufacturers are coming out with product concepts just like this now, uh, even bringing their old designs back into the more modern era, but Daniel Defense was really the one to do this. Now, again, this was prior to when AR-15 building was a thing, so uh, the putting together of a customized rifle ready to go was a really popular concept in the late 2000s. Now you see everybody's making parts and accessories and everything, and the stuff that people are building and putting together sort of mimic this design concept. So really this was the player that brought it into this era of the modern AR-15 designs, and you know, a lot of it Pretty much a bulk of it has to do with Daniel Defense, which is why they've been so popular. Now, the price point on these, they are all over the place, depending on which variation and configuration you're getting it in. But something like this, the DDM4 V11, um, you're typically under normal circumstances gonna pick one of these up for $1,500, $1,600 new. Um, used, you know, be around, you know, 12, 13 maybe. But of course the market, especially on AR-15s right now is upside down. So use these things are going in about the high teens right now, even in some cases, Cases in the low twos, uh, but the high teens, you know, the 16, 17, 18 is about typically where these things are sitting. Um, but just really, really cool, lightweight, ergonomic, sleek. Um, this one has sort of a olive drab uh, finish on it. And that's another thing about Daniel Defense is they really broke the mold in terms of the customizing and, and really the, the different color schemes and everything, uh, really just breaking up what we knew as the traditional lines of the AR-15. So just kind of a cool and innovative company. And now, of course, again, like I mentioned, most of your AR-15s are following these lines. But anyway, yeah, really cool rifles. I love it when Daniel Defense AR-15s come in. They're always really fun to get to handle and, of course, sell on to the next buyer. But uh, anyway, we will end up this video here with the uh, DDM4V11 from Daniel Defense. 
Well, that's all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please let me know by hitting that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, remember we do upload these videos every week. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you off there. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.